Hey everybody, it's Party Elite kicking off something a little special for Desperados 3. Now this is not going to be a Let's Play in the traditional sense, though we are going to be watching all the cutscenes and following through the story. My intent with the gameplay and commentary is more to highlight special ways to tackle each level. One thing that I think Desperados 3 does best is allow you to approach each level in a variety of different ways. So I want to highlight my favorite ways of tackling each level, and I want to highlight things that might not be so obvious at first glance. I am super excited for this series because this is what's got me hooked on the game, and if you enjoy it, you know what to do. If you want to see more Desperados 3 on the channel, let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. Give me your feedback, give me your thoughts, give me your own versions of how you approach levels if you've been playing the game as well. Now, two last things I want to mention before we dive in, folks. Normally, we're going to be doing one level per episode, but since we're doing the prologue today and it's really short, we're actually going to do the prologue as well as the first level and uh, try and showcase already what's special right from the start. Now, apart from that, I just want to mention that I am playing on Desperado difficulty, which is the hardest difficulty, which means there are more guards. They have tighter patrols, they have quicker reaction times, it's a lot harder. So if the game looks ridiculously difficult, that's why it can be toned down, and it can be toned down a lot. So folks, that's enough of an introduction, I think. Super excited to dive on in, so let's get this party started. All right, here's our prologue. Once upon a time, somewhere in the desert of Mexico, two riders approach the hideout of an infamous outlaw. Playing on Desperado difficulty. A few miles past the Mexican border, the ruins of an old village fringe the cliffs of Devil's Canyon. Rumor has it that an infamous outlaw has his hideout here, a man who only goes by the name of Frank. Today, two riders approach from the desert, bounty hunters who've made it their mission to bring Frank in dead or alive. Will they succeed where others failed, or will they end up as a food for the vultures? Johnny, you're straggling. Come on. Right behind you, Pa. I'm going on ahead. You follow. Keep your head down. Yes, sir. Welcome to the Wild West, ladies and gentlemen. So, this is the prologue. It is a bit of a tutorial. You'll see these little overlays come up giving us directions, and you'll see these little sheets of paper as well that teach us different lessons and sometimes unlock the next stage of the game. What I'm going to do is I'm going to describe the things that I feel are most relevant, most important to understand early on so that as we move along with this playthrough or this walkthrough or whatever you want to call it, uh, I don't have to highlight basic mechanics over and over again, but instead what's new or special or how we're using those mechanics. So let's go ahead and move on up and uh, get ourselves to crouch right off the bat. And as we get closer over here, I'm going to right click on this guard over here. And what that's going to do is it's going to show us his viewing cone. Vision cones, viewing cones, they are very important to plan your movements. And you'll see that they come in three shades. One shade is none. I don't know if that counts. But another is the solid green, which is where they can see at all times. Doesn't matter if you're walking or crouching or standing or what have you. Where it's kind of got this like striped pattern, that's where they can not see you if you're crouched. So you can crouch in those areas and you won't be spotted. But if you stand, you will be spotted. Now you can see over here, this man's got no vision. So we're able to just rush up to the ladder over here, climb up top, and now we're in the clear. We can hop off the roof on the other side and make our way over nice and easy. Nothing else to highlight over here, so let's make our way over. Let's go. 
joining dad on the other side, and I believe this is one of those times we have to read through. Now, the game stresses the importance of saving, and it is very important. Stay close. There's another up ahead. I'll be making mistakes from time to time. I'm going to try and do, you know, as perfect a run as possible every time, but there are so many moving parts. Mistakes will happen, so unless we're trying to obtain a badge, uh, we're going to be uh, quick saving fairly often and hopefully not quick loading too often, but uh, it is a part of the game. Now here, we are introduced. We need to get his attention elsewhere. Sure. I'll throw one of my coins. Good idea. Get him to turn his head. I'll do the rest. A very familiar ability to fans of the series, at least, that John Cooper has. He's got this coin he can toss within a radius. And let's right-click on this guy so we can see his viewing cone. You'll see he's kind of scanning this area. But this is pretty obvious, I think, to those of you familiar with this kind of game. Toss the coin. He hears it, turns around, and that frees you up to take action from other angles. A very important skill. So basic, but so essential. Much like that advice. And that advice. Think slow, act fast, always. Planning is so important in this game, and it's part of what makes it so special. I love it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Follow me. Keep your head down. Yes, sir. Uh, things are going to get a little bit more complicated as we go along, but it's just the tutorial level, so it's pretty linear. Uh, the excitement starts with the next level. Uh, but it's very important to go through this, though, so you can learn all the unique elements of the game and things that make it special. So you can recognize patterns like the one we're about to take advantage of right now. So this lady over here is going to make her way over to the horses. And uh, as you may or may not know, horses, if bothered, tend to get very upset. We're actually going to use our coin to make this horse very upset. Entertain. <laughs> never gets old all right quick movement again the, he noticed the knocked out body it was an accident now accidents don't raise the alarms unlike a regular dead body how many men does frank have doesn't matter boy one on one you always got a chance you just gotta thin out the pack so taking advantage of environmental kills like that is so important because it means that alarms aren't likely to get pulled uh though uh locked no surprise there though you do have to be quick to respond um, All right, son. Time for a challenge. See that ladder up there? I need you to throw it down for me. Yeah, it keeps inter interrupting me with uh, with instructions. So yeah, basically, environmental kills are very helpful. They don't raise the alarm, though people will notice, and their patrols and paths will change as a result of finding a knocked out or dead body. Now, when people are knocked out, you'll have noticed the stars hovering over her head. You still have to tie them up, as uh, James did there. You'll still have to tie them up to make sure they can't get free and chase after you after their knocked out period is done. Now, one of the unique features that John has is his ability to climb vines and other difficult to climb things, which unlocks, obviously, uh, certain parts of the map to him specifically, so he can do things that assist his other mates. For example, drop ladders so that those that can't climb vines can climb the ladders. Let's make our way over. Good job. That's my boy. It was easy. On my way. All right, let's keep going over here. And again, super simple, but introducing us to more concepts. So just going to quickly, I think I have to interact with this thing before we can move on. And this just tells us that when we get up high, vision cones cannot spot us as long as we stay crouched. So we're going to try a way to sneak through. To find a way to sneak through. Now, super important to check everyone's viewing angles and vision cones and everything. These guys are stuck in a conversation. They're permanently stuck facing these directions, and we can see the ladder is under constant watch. So let's go ahead and pay attention to how we're going to get around. We want to get around some of these things, and you'll notice obstacles will either allow you to crouch behind them, or they will block things entirely. And visually, it's very clear. Low obstacles will allow you to crouch behind them. High obstacles will completely block vision behind them. So we've cleared your viewing angles. You're looking the other way. You, we can get up to here. So let's go ahead and hide up in the bushes there and use our beautiful coins to get everybody to look away. And let's rush on up the ladder there. Nice and easy. Done. Come on, you stealing sow. I'm right here, you worthless drunk. Now this, is, <laughs> now this is a scripted event. It's about to go down. Come on. 
and there are quite a few in the game, and triggering those scripted events can unlock opportunities like this. Sure thing. Right, so now uh, James is able to climb up over here because those guys have been pulled away. I got now... Scare me, you See the one in the back, near the cliff? Find a way to distract him with your coin. Then I can take them both out. All right, let's go ahead and do a quick save over here. Uh, it's a lot easier than it looks because if you rotate the camera, you'll see there's a spot you can <laughs> creep behind. Um, so roll to the side over here, and that'll bring him within the range of our coin. From over here, he was we weren't able to distract him in the right direction. Let's go ahead and toss our coin, have him face the other way. Mission accomplished over here. He's going to rush over now. And again, this is just showcasing to us as well the opportunities we'll have when we grow up. Tie him up and quick before he comes to. There you go. We're going to head on down there and tie him up. Well, let's dive down over here. We'll tie him up before he's able to get back up, and that'll prevent him from uh, becoming a part of the problem, so to speak. Good job. Now hide him in the bushes. All right, so as a child, we can only drag them. Now, when you're dragging dead bodies, uh, you stay low, so you count as crouched. But when we become an adult, we... Uh, we stand when we... Oh, I guess we don't have to hide this one. Fair enough. Jeez, do, do clean up your work, man. Um, but when we're an adult, different characters carry bodies in different ways. Uh, with John actually standing as an adult, but a few characters stay low, stay crouched, though it does make them slower. I'll highlight that when it becomes more relevant. On my way. We gotta get moving. Now, let's get on up over here. Sure thing. Bit of jump in action. Oh. I don't know if that's scripted or if you can actually die there. <laughs> well, let's keep moving though. Where'd they all come from? Don't matter. See that crane up there? Yeah. How about you go over there and make a delivery? Coming right up, sir. All right. It's now or never. Uh, this is always an opportunity to make dad jokes, I guess, when you're a dad. Uh, pressing H, by the way, highlights interactive elements, so you can see ways that you can, uh, you know, get environmental kills and things like that. But this is another accident we're setting up. If we right-click on the gunman over here, you'll see he does look over at this vine. I am able to toys, toys, to toss my coin up there, uh, just to get him to look away briefly. But if I do that, well, let's get him to look up over there, right? And then we can get up, get right behind him. Cool. Get up the vines over here. Beautiful. Beautiful. Nice and easy, nice and easy. I don't remember what this one says. Oh, that's the uh, highlight one. Wow. <laughs> In fact, apparently I do remember what it says. Uh, let's hop down over here and get the job done, right? Just got to drop this down. Uh, and every once in a while, you'll see highlighted doors like this, hatches and doors. Uh, they allow you to fast travel basically between two short distances on the map uh, with a different, basically, path. Anyway, let's get the job done here. On my way. Ah! Oh, it. Smooth. Real smooth. Nice job, son. Now stay right there. I'll come to you. And there you have it. Right. On my way. Pulling that kind of stuff off in the game is just one of the best feelings, honestly. Good job, boy. You know the drill. You wait till I'm back. I thought I was ready this time. Next time, I bet. I said the same thing last time. Why can't I come with you? Just give me a gun. A gun, huh? I want to see you hit that tree from 15 paces.
All right. It feels really good looking back at uh, the prior story. I mean, whether you're attached to the series or not, it's really nice how the game keeps going back and forth between uh, the past and what we'll call the present. Uh, this entire game is a prequel to the rest of the series, so it'll show you how the gang gets together and stuff. Uh, but I, I personally really enjoy those little uh, those moments. And there are there are more, though the next level takes us to being an adult as John Cooper. Running late on payday. A train owned by the influential DeWitt Company is on its way to the town of Flagstone. At Byers Pass, it runs into an unexpected roadblock. As you can see, this level here has badges, finally, and all that you see that I've earned here, they've all been earned on Desperado difficulty, and I'm going to show you how to do that today with this playthrough. We're also going to try and unlock this badge over here, don't save during the mission, um, just to add a little bit of tension, why not? I almost got it done before, but cacked it up literally on the last, last step of the uh, level, so let's try and finish that off today. But we're going to try and accomplish all these, including don't use firearms. That's particularly important to highlight. Uh, and everything else will, will come by pretty easily. So let's go ahead and hit play and just go over the setup over here. So running on freshly laid tracks, a heavily loaded train snakes along the Rocky Mountain landscape. Its wagons, bearing the sign of the DeWitt Company, have been freshly loaded in Denver and now carry people and goods towards the small mountain town of Flagstone. As the train enters Byers Pass, mood among the passengers grows uneasy. Bandits are roaming these parts, and the company has lost more than one train in recent months. Maybe the mercenaries hired to escort the train will be enough to deter any attackers this time. I have my doubts. Pick her clean, boys! Take everything that shines! What could drink a man blind? Come on, let's show them who's boss. Yeah, take cover. Come this way, let's flank him. He saw us. I wonder what's in here. <laughs> Something tells me you ain't here punching tickets. Huh. Seems like we made an unplanned stop. I'd better go find out what's holding us up. Ladies and gentlemen, adult Mr. Cooper, apparently with the same sense of humor as his dad. So, the game is still tutorializing in this level, so I'm going to skip past all these sheets that pop up. I'm going to explain to you what, they are, what they're saying, if it's relevant, and I'll explain to you what my plan is for each segment as we go through it. I really like how the game gives you an overview of the level you're dealing with before throwing you into it, but then when you're actually panning around, you cannot go too far. So I'll explain each section as it becomes relevant. For now, we're going to rush up, stab this guy in the back. It's all we can do. Rush up to the ledge over here, which is where we get our throwing ability. And we're going to throw our knife to stab this guy who's looking over this little passage over here. These two guys, they never care about us. They don't look at us or anything, so we can just rush by them without having to worry. So let's go ahead, knife this fool in the back. And yes, yeah, sneak our way up to the front of the train. Now, when you're speed running, obviously, you're going to be clicking a lot faster, but this is a very... 
easy to do very quickly kind of a section over here. You rush across the bottom over here. Again, ignore these guys. I love this. The little details are amazing. <laughs> um, but yeah, you rush past. If you walk over your knife where you've thrown it, you pick it up automatically, which will become relevant in just a moment. And now we're going to climb up top over here and make our way across. Now, where we're coming up to next, the game wants to use our guns for the first time. But we're trying to go without any guns used. So we're going to get down low, creep up to the edge over here, and use our throwing knife to kill this fool. His friend's going to notice. We're going to rush to the bushes over here. As he turns his back, we're going to rush, pick up the knife, and stab him in the back. He turns his back because he's going down the ladder. So that's all we got to wait for is that turnaround. We can go in there, pick up the knife, stab him in the back. No alerts, no alarms. Nothing's gone wrong. I mean, for these two, things have gone wrong. But nothing for us. We're, we're fine. Now, over here, the game wants us to use showdown mode to use both of our guns to kill these guys one at a time and rescue this person over here. But again, we're trying not to use any guns. So instead, we're going to creep up, jump down, use our coin to distract one of them, stab the other, and then throw the knife at the first like this so out goes the coin in goes the stab and out goes the throwing knife uh, i'd say you owe me one hey now are you kidding me i'd say we're even now Now, I suggest you return to your wagon. I'll handle things from here. Well, like you handled those two? Listen, Mr... Cooper. Mr. Cooper, I've been hired to make sure this train gets to Flagstone. I'd appreciate it if you don't get in my way. Well, now, Mr... McCoy. Dr. McCoy. Right. Dr. McCoy. The way I see it, there's only one way forward, and I gotta get to Flagstone, too. Suit yourself, but don't say I didn't warn you. So... Looks like the bandits blocked the tunnel. Why do you think the train stopped? It's gonna take some work to clear those rocks. Good thing they have a stash of dynamite up on that plateau. Yeah, grab it and clear the tunnel. <laughs> Not such a bad plan. I don't do bad plans. Fair enough. Let's get to it then. Sure thing. And that, folks, is how Doc McCoy joins the gang. Uh, those of you familiar with the series will recognize Doc McCoy's name. He, however, does not have an eye patch. I'm pretty sure from game one he'd had an eye patch, so maybe we learn how he gets it in this game. But uh, just to touch on one thing real quick, the reason we threw the coin over here was to make sure that this guy didn't get a shot off, because the moment you stab the first guy, the second guy gets a shot off, and you lose a hit point. So that's a good way to make sure that doesn't happen. You can still survive if it does, but it's better for it not to happen. Now, let's show off Doc McCoy's bag of tricks. Literally and metaphorically speaking, we've got this guard over here who is gazing over. So we got to crouch. Let's crouch both of our characters just in case. Move up to the bushes over here. And his bag that we're going to toss over here, what it does is... My bag is bait. You just hide and learn something. That. So it's actually going to bait low-tier enemy units over... And if they interact with it, well, I'll show you what happens. Let's put the bag down. You can intercept these people at any point in time. You don't have to let them interact with the bag or anything like that. But I want to show you what happens uh, when they do interact. It takes a second and they get blinded. Should have kept your hands. Gas trap, huh? Oh, not bad. How do you open that thing safely? You don't, Mr. Cooper. Unless you're me. So, very fun to use. Again, you can intercept someone who's been baited by it, and you can also synergize it with other tools. So, for example, let's get our bag out there, and this kill is for Cooper. So, we're just going to wait for things to line up. There we go. Boom. Down goes Buddy. Nice and easy. And again, this game is all about finding those synergies, so it's always fun to come up with them. 
Now in this next section, the game wants to use Doc McCoy's sniper pistol to gun this poncho down. Now ponchos are enemies that do not get attracted by bait. Uh, they're very hard to distract and things like that. And the game wants us to, to gun him down because he's watching over this area. But if we right click, you can see we can crouch pretty close and there's a small sliver where we get spotted easily. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to move up right to the edge of where we can get to. And the thing here is, again, because we're not using firearms, we can't use our sniper rifle. What we can do is Cooper, he's able to climb vines. So we're just going to wait for one more revolution, and we're going to push through, rush through. Let's go, go, go. McCoy can't. So this is up to Cooper. He's going to go through over here and unravel the ladder over here as uh, McCoy comes up. Now, we can't run in this area because we will get spotted. McCoy. So we just have to stay low. We just need to remember to stay low up there. If you don't mind, Mr. McCoy. Fine. Saves me a And I love that. It actually the game keeps in mind that I didn't do the sniping and instead I, I gave Cooper the kill. I love that it does that. Alright, so this is a really fun section. Uh, I, I like my execution of it. We're gonna toss the bag over there, but he's gonna notice. Now he cannot be seen by this gunman over there. We're gonna go in for the stab kill over here. Holding down control while committing a melee attack uh, it does an instant pickup, so it's faster to pick the person up after you kill them. Now here, his friend who's going back and forth will notice that he's gone, but because we put the bag down there, she notices the bag before she notices him missing. Now all we have to do is that. Just make sure Buddy can't see where we're about to stab her, stab her, bring her body to the bushes, use our coin, get this guy to turn around as well. He's going to notice the bag too. Again, it's outside of the viewing angles of this guy. All we got to do is this time we'll send McCoy in because the quickest way to pick the bag up is to allow it to be triggered and then move in with McCoy. He'll pick up the bag and finish the job at the same time. Now over here, you're able to bait this guy out with the bag as well if you want to, but that's unnecessary. Uh, you do have to be wary of the poncho over here who's able to see if you run or stand up in this area. So the easiest way to solve this situation is to just wait for him to look away and then rush him with a throwing knife. Problem solved. Doc McCoy down to the bushes over here and over to the bushes over here while Cooper goes up to the bushes over here. We need to kill this guy like that, rush over, pick up the knife, rush around, rush this guy, stab him in the back, and McCoy can rush with his syringe and kill this guy. So the play there is mainly for style points, but basically the poncho keeps looking back and forth and this guy keeps going back and forth. So you want to wait until he's over there so you can stab him with a thrown knife, run in to pick up the knife, and you kind of bend your approach a bit so you don't get spotted on the approach and you just rush this guy. You can throw your knife to kill him too, but again, the rush is just more stylish and cool points. You know, rule of cool, right? If it's cool, you got to try and do it. Uh, and McCoy obviously is able to go in here and finish this guy off. Let's head on down next. And the next section here, we're actually going to use the showdown mode to execute what needs executing. Exactly. I take one, you take the other. So let's get into position over here. So in uh, easier difficulties, showdown mode pauses the game, but in Desperado, it keeps the game rolling. What you can do is you can assign moves to each of the characters you have available to you, and you hit execute. Oh, teamwork, baby. Now, this one's a pretty simple one, but when they get complicated, it is some of the most fun you can have. It feels so cool to properly execute one. Waste time. Let's keep going. Now, here is an option. Now, if you're speed running, you're going to want to take this ladder, go across, stay low because you will get spotted. So stay low, go across, and you're into the next section. But we're not trying to speed run. Instead, we're trying to rescue all the civilians. That's a different badge. So we're actually going to try and help these guys out. There is one, two, three four, five guards over here. We cannot use throwing knives at the beginning because people will hear each other like getting stabbed, uh, but instead we have to melee because melee has a lower radius around which it can be heard. You'll see the throwing knife, that blue circle, that's how loud it is, whereas melee, the circle's a lot smaller. Um, so that's what we have to do. We have to melee, thin the numbers, and then, uh, and then get a little more aggressive. Uh, so let's go ahead and wait for this guy to turn around. We can go and stab and pick up. Hold control to do that, right? So stab, pick him up, pull him into the bushes over here quickly, 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 and drop him. Doc McCoy is able to come up to here. Gonna go ahead, 
throw his bag down over here, send him into the bushes up there, toss our coin over here so Buddy turns around. He's going to notice the bag. He's going to head over. We're going to try and see the poncho. Noticed it, but he ignores it. Try and recreate what we did earlier. Go in, stab, pick him up, pull him into the bushes, and drop him off. Nice and easy. Now the next step involves sending Cooper up over here, going in for the stab there, going in for the stab here, and throwing the knife to finish that guy off. Now you can only do that. Let's get going. Whoever you are, thank you. I'll send you the check. I didn't want y'all to miss that. I'll send you the check line. I like it a lot. Um, you have to wait until the poncho turns to look towards the fire. Uh, and immediately when he does that, you send McCoy in to stab him in the back and Cooper in to stab this guy in the back. Otherwise, they will notice each other. And if you wait too long, then the guy who's down over here hears this guy getting killed if he gets too close. Uh, which is why I threw the knife, because I wasn't sure if you heard it or not. If you're a little bit quicker, uh, which I would have been if I wasn't commenting, I guess, uh, you can actually kill this guy however you want. He won't notice. Uh, but okay, cool. We're, we're good. So this area has been cleared out. Let's go ahead and make our way up this ladder over here. And make our way over to what is basically the final section of this level. Again, stay low. We don't want to get spotted. Hard in there somewhere. Anatomically, maybe. We're going to hop on over here. And let me explain to you what's going on in this part of the level. Looks like we made it. We still need the dynamite to clear the tunnel. That's easy. Come on, let's make our way up. All right. So, buddy over here, this gunman is patrolling back and forth, talking to these two guys. This guy has a bunch of civilians under his uh, guard. Over here, this guy's got a couple of civvies under his guard as well. And over here, this thug is also moving back and forth from up over here down to here, loading this stuff up. He's going to keep going back and forth. These guys are watching this area real close. And these guys are talking to each other permanently while this guy goes back and forth uh, from up over there to down over here. So let's take care of all that first. As this guy's running away, we're going to dive down over here. We're going to move into the bushes. Throw the knife. Pick this guy up. All right. I'm going to pull you back over here. Put the body down over here. Now these guys, we have to be very careful because this thug over here, when he comes down here, he's able to see the spot here. So we have to be very careful. Let's go ahead and throw the knife. Get rid of this guy who's patrolling. Pick his body up and dump it in the bushes too. All right, nice and easy. And then Cooper is able to... No, you know, let's stay down over here for now. Wait until this guy gets caught up with his business over here. Now let's move up to the ladder. We have to stay low because there are guards up over here as well that I didn't touch on. So we have to stay low. So let's go ahead, get up to here. Toss the coin. This will get us a badge. And topple this rock over as well. Get back into the bushes before this guy spots us. Nice and easy. Okay. Oh. So the coin toss was one of the badges. Distract three guards at the same time with Cooper's coin. And the rock going down kills three guards at the same time. That is another badge. Uh, I hope you all don't mind this last save reminder. That's up there because we haven't saved yet. Okay. So that's been taken care of. Now we're going to take care of these guys over here. So when he gets up over there, we're going to dive down. Going to make our way into the bushes over here real quick. Okay. Now we're going to wait patiently. As soon as he gets past, we're going to come up over here, stab him, pick him up, and put him into the bushes over here as well. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. You'll notice, by the way, Doc McCoy drags bodies. So he actually stays down low when dragging bodies, whereas uh, Cooper stands up when dragging bodies or when moving bodies. So you have to keep that in mind when it comes to viewing angles and things like that as well. Now, Buddy over here, this thug, we're going to allow him to pick up his goods and make his way back because he moves a little too quickly on his way up to here. And this guy is watching over this area. So we want to try and kill Buddy in this little blind spot over here. So we let him pick stuff up. He's going to turn around. He gets slowed down by his cargo, let's call it. And just got to keep an eye on his viewing angles as well. When he gets to the edge there, we're going to rush him, and down he goes. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. My heart is in my throat right now because we haven't saved yet, and I do not want to go right back to the beginning of this level, as you can imagine. We've done well so far, so let's go ahead and put this body down over here. Okay. Head up the ladder. We're going to make McCoy join Cooper on the other side. He's going to stay behind, but we're going to just pull them together real quick. Uh, let's keep you at the base of this ladder. All right, Cooper, you're up. Buddy over here, 
His patrol is a little concerning, I'm not going to lie. Um, here's what I'm going to want to do. I'm going to wait until he does another cycle. We need to move up to here. See, I, I don't like this section of his, uh, of his viewing angle. So we're going to wait until he's over here, looking down. Stay low. Oh, 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 that was not good. Move up. We pass this area over here. Keep going. Keep going. There's people up over here that might spot us as well, so we have to be careful. All right, let's move up to there. Now, he can't see us. He can't see us. Okay. He's going to look down. We're going to move up to there. Move up to there. We're going to move around. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Good stuff. Stab buddy. And stab buddy number two. Down he goes. Beautiful. Okay. Let's go ahead. Pick up the knife. So this area has been cleared. We pick up the knife. We head up to the ladder over here. McCoy, get up the ladder here. All right. So we're going to get to the ladder up there, and then we're going to do another quick conversation about what's next. And again, this is, you know, we're well past the speed run phase, but you can do this a lot more quickly. And in lower difficulties, there are fewer enemies if you want to do the speed run that way. So up over here, this guy, this gunman, keeps going back and forth. When he turns around, we want to go up, throw the knife, stab him in the back. These guys watch over each other, so they need to be killed at the same time. This person goes back and forth, engages in a conversation over here, but he's able to see up there. So we have to make sure he's down there when we move up for the kill. This guy's turned around, so let's move up and throw the knife. Down he goes. Cool. McCoy, we can get you up as well. Alright, let's get Cooper rolling around, hiding up there. Yeah, we're good, we're good. Uh, McCoy, let's get you into the bushes over here. We're going to let this person do another cycle back and forth over here before the next phase of our movements. Okay. So they're going to have a little conversation. We want to make sure that conversation is done first before we make our next move. We're going to drop this guy, climb the vine, carry his body, and hide it up there. So Cooper is selected. Drop this guy. Up we go. Pick up his body. Pick up his body, I said, and let's go, let's go, let's go, hurry it up. Hurry up. Down he goes, excellent. We can creep up to there. Oh, you know what? I don't like it, I don't like it. Let's pull back. Let them do another cycle. We can hold down X to speed time up. Now they're going to have a little conversation over here. So we're going to get up to these bushes over here first, and then we're going to prepare a synchronized action. So let's go ahead and make our move. Right? Get into showdown mode. Kill this guy. Kill this guy. Execute. Let's go. Nice. Gotta pick this body up first. Hide it as quickly as possible. Pick this body up next. Hide that as well. Alright, good stuff. Drop those bodies, please, and thank you. Alright. Now this person's next. We are able to throw the knife and kill them, but we have to make sure that this guy can't hear it, right? So let's wait until we're in the clear there. Down you go. Pick that body up. Now, here is where things get really interesting. We're going to bring McCoy up. Now, to get the badge that requires saving all civilians, it includes this guy. If you get too close, Big Ann triggers her, like, finale and shoots him. So you have to be very fast over here. To do that, we're going to bring McCoy over a little bit. We're going to bring... Sorry, uh, Cooper over a little bit. We're going to send McCoy running down to stab this guy, and Cooper's going to throw the knife at Big Ann. All right? Here's what we're going to do. So, double clicks all around. In we go, in we go, in we go, and boom, done. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, Cooper, go pick up your knife. McCoy. Finish the job over here. And there's our badge for the civilians. Honestly, I'm this close to just saving the game right now. <laughs> this is where the last time I tried to accomplish it in, uh, in Desperado difficulty, this is where it all went sideways. Um, but we should be fine here. Let's go ahead and get rid of this poncho. The reason why we're doing this is because any people we don't kill right now, they will confront us in the next stage of this level. So we want to clean up a little bit. All right, we're done there. We're going to move up and join Cooper up top. All right. Up we go. Up we go. Head down the ladder over here. And it's showtime. All right. So, pick up a dynamite stick, toss it down over here. All right, it's dynamite time. Need to stay on top of things. 
More dynamite. It's gonna get loud. I got the tools for the job. Come on now. There we go. There we go. Beautiful. The safe spot to meet up. Fine with me. <laughs> Beautiful. So that's actually where I died. I didn't want to mention the dynamite because I didn't want to tell you what happens until it happens. But yeah, I, uh, I mistimed my dynamite tosses and uh, one of them just didn't throw their dynamite in time. That's how I cacked it up the previous time I tried to do this without saving. But there you have it. You, you watched me earn all the badges I'd already earned and earn a new one. Um, all while playing on Desperado difficulty. That's how you do it, folks. The only other one to do is the uh, speed run, but that, of course, involves ignoring a different badge altogether. We dive on in to finish this level off. If you've done it differently, if you have some interesting ideas, please share them in the comments down below because I love to read them. I love to hear other ideas. It's my favorite part of a game like this. But let's round this level off, shall we? Guess you made the DeVitt company happy today. How much do you get for a job like this? Hope you're not expecting a cut. Relax. I got what I need. You're changing rides? <laughs> Gotta make good on time. Like I said, I got an appointment I'd like to keep. Suit yourself. It wasn't half bad working with you, McCoy. Sure. If you need a professional, you know who to send for. Good day, Mr. Cooper. All right, feels good, man. It feels good. We earned all of these, and just if you were keeping track or you want to make sure you can pull it off as well or whatever, this is a pretty um, relatively easy mission, you know, considering how complicated things get later. But saving all groups of civilians, you know, every time th th that's pretty straightforward. We did that all the way through. It was a one opportunity that you have to miss it if you decide to ignore them killed three bandits at the same time that was tossing the rock right at that last section there uh kill bandits using dynamite that's just uh, again you just need to leave enough bandits alive which we did we cleared basically everybody out and then you just toss dynamites to kill bandits um don't use your guns distract three bandits at the same time using cooper's coin again that was underneath the rock that we killed them with uh just toss the coin doesn't matter which direction you distract them with gets you the badge don't save it's pretty self-explanatory don't use firearms i taught you or showed you where to do the rushes how to do the rushes and how to make sure you never have to shoot and you can do it without losing any health on mccoy either which i think is a nice extra touch and then completing the mission on hard difficulty that is you know what it is i suppose man it feels good and it's always cool to actually see the playthrough played out in this kind of uh map mode as well i love the way it does replays super dope because you can see where you did everything, where you saved, where you moved, how you approach things. And I, I'm really looking forward. Well, I said earlier, leave it in the comments. If you approach things differently or if you have your own unique solution, I mean it. I This is my favorite part of this game. The idea of different ways of solving things. And again, this is a pretty linear and simple mission. But the next one and the one after that, those are amazing. And I'm really looking forward to how different people uh, you know, deal with these things. Uh, so yeah, the next one, I think what I'll do is I'll release another video either later today or maybe tomorrow, depending on, you know, what I feel like and uh, and more importantly, perhaps what you feel like. You let me know what you want. Do you want more Desperados 3 on the channel in this format? Leave a like, leave a comment. It always makes a massive difference in how I approach content on the channel, what I do more or less of. Now, I'm loving this game, and if you are too, I'd love to know it so that I know that I should keep covering it like this. Folks, that's it for today, though. Next episode is going to have a much more intense and non-linear level. Uh, and then, oh man, the, the level after that. Oh, there's some really cool stuff coming up. I cannot, I cannot wait to share. 
I hope you all enjoyed, but before I say my farewell, let's make sure we hit continue so you can take a look at the level stats really quickly, time played, who got how many kills, we left those two enemies alive, so that's the only stat that, you know, if you want to change for yourself, you can do, and the one alarm count is a necessity of this level, uh, because it's where you throw your knife or shoot the guy and his buddy notices and comes down the ladder. Nonetheless, folks, this is where I leave you. A massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons for supporting this channel on a monthly basis to keep us alive and running smoothly. And a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.